What was the first ever instance of traditional gambling? In truth, nobody really knows. The inception of gambling itself predates written history, but some of the earliest known examples included dice, or their precursor Ostrogali, which were typically knuckle bones marked with numbers or symbols in BCE Mesopotamia, Chinese dominoes and bets on animal fights in a similar period, or Egyptian, Greek, and Roman wager games conducted with varying forms of physical items like rocks or clay squares. These early examples were primitive, to be sure, but gambling rapidly evolved. Asnaz, a Persian card game, would eventually become Western poker. Chinese dominoes would eventually become Pai Gao. And in 1938, Venice, Italy, the first known example of a modern-day casino would be born. From that point in time onward, gambling has become an enormous profit sector. From 2001 to 2019 alone, gambling market yield for gaming would increase from $220 billion to $495 billion. But with multi-billion dollar revenue generating casinos all over the world, the trajectory isn't slowing down. In fact, over the past few years, the relative growth rate of gambling in Western markets has dramatically accelerated in some industries, while others tap into entirely new demographics through unregulated methods. In essence, echoing the video title here, gambling is an unstoppable force that is becoming a pervasive issue with no end in sight. To best explain, I need to break this video down into three separate topics, sports betting, kick versus switch, and video games. Between these three topics, though they might seem unrelated in a sense, the concept of gambling can be shown for what it really is. That is to say, a prolific virus that continually harvests additional market share through addictive practices, conflicts of interest, and deceptive means. Of course, it's true adults are and should be free to participate in whatever activities they choose to, but the world of gambling is not just targeting adults, and with increasingly creative promotional structures, it's now growing faster than ever. Let's begin with sports betting. To explain this, I have to get a little bit technical, but I'll boil it down as much as I can. Jammed into an unrelated piece of legislation called the Safe Port Act of 2006, a rapidly drawn up and hastily modified Enforcement Act, more precisely, the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act, was signed into law by George W. Bush. This Enforcement Act banned companies from taking payments online in violation of state or federal law and effectively struck a death blow to the world of online casinos in the United States. Now, when discussing the accelerated rise of gambling across the globe, that might seem contradictory, but it's not. See, while closing down access to certain types of online gambling, the law itself actually opened the door for simulation bets, or fantasy betting. This would give rise to companies like FanDuel, or DraftKings as we know them today, which offered services tagged as a skill-based competition rather than simple betting methods, which allowed them to operate freely. FanDuel became massively popular with incredible speed, but the concept of sports betting wasn't exactly popular with major sports leagues, like the NFL, for example. It's a long and complicated history, but major leagues were understandably apprehensive about the legality and fairness of allowing bets to take place on their games, especially with relation to players, coaches, and related personnel, which stifled growth for companies like DraftKings or FanDuel for at least a few years. Insider betting scandals, illegal betting rings at a collegiate level, you name it, it happened. And the general atmosphere was extremely sour towards the very concept of sports betting itself, especially from administrative officials. Well, all of that dramatically changed in 2018 when the United States Supreme Court ruled that the PASPA, the Professional and Amateur Sports Protection Act of 1992, was unconstitutional, which opened the floodgates for legalized sports betting across the United States. What followed was a near 20-fold increase in sports betting revenue with leagues like the NFL tacitly embracing the concept, then flat-out partnering with bet providers. A tidal wave of state-level legalizations drove numbers higher and higher, and according to Pew Research, as much as 19% of U.S. adults say that they have bet money on sports in the past year alone. But it doesn't stop there. See, while restrictions still linger for players of those leagues enriching themselves from the sports betting industry, owners are something else entirely. According to SEC filings, James Dolan, owner of the New York Knicks, Robert Kraft, owner of the New England Patriots, Hal Steinbrenner, owner of the New York Yankees, and Jerry Jones, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, among others, are all substantial investors in DraftKings, which is one of the partnered betting companies directly associated with the NFL. According to NFL spokesman Brian McCarthy, current league policy, quote, enables personnel to own equity interest in an entity that generates less than a third of its revenue from gambling-related operations, end quote. Which means that while there might still be some sort of phantom guardrails in place, optically speaking, the tide has now shifted and sports betting is monumentally growing in the United States. Now, that's already an excellent example by itself, highlighting the unstoppable rise of gambling, at least in the United States in particular, but it's only the first of three. 
Next is Kick, a live streaming platform that aims to compete with Twitch and YouTube, which is an even more egregious display of pervasive gambling. Kick presents itself as a safe haven for streamers from unjust moderation, unexpected bans, and greedy profit-sharing models. Unlike Twitch, the site offers a 95-5% to revenue split to streamers, which is undeniably superior in every conceivable way. However, while the website may seem to operate like any other comparable streaming startup, such as Mixer before it was shut down by Microsoft, the reality behind the curtain is not so simple. The number one category on Kick is called Slots and Casino. This is notable because the concept of streaming slot and casino games is highly controversial right now, with Twitch being pressured to prohibit the practice entirely. Why? Because people watching websites like Twitch or Kick are often underage, which means that popular online celebrities, streamers I mean, with majority adolescent audiences are gambling in front of children. That's obviously a bit of a problem. Here's the real issue though. Kick as a company is called Kick Streaming Proprietary Limited, which was disclosed when they released an iOS version of their application to the Apple Store. Kick Streaming is completely owned by an Australian company called EasyGo Entertainment, and two-thirds of EasyGo Entertainment is owned by a man named Bijan Terani. Remember that name. The final third of EasyGo Entertainment as a company is held by a separate entity called Ashwood Holdings Proprietary Limited, which is solely controlled by a man named Ed Craven, the second name we need to remember. Bijan Tarani and Ed Craven, we know this because of a lawsuit filed by a former associate of theirs against their company, are also co-owners of a crypto casino website called Stake.com. Hopefully everyone can start to see what's happening here. The owners of a crypto casino, a massive crypto casino by the way, which pays Drake $100 million per year as well as an untold number of streamers a ridiculous amount of money to promote gambling to their underage fans, are also owners of a live streaming website aiming to compete with Twitch and YouTube. The number one category on that website is slots and casino, where streamers receive massive promotional balances from stake.com so that they can showcase addictive gambling to their often teenage audiences. And all of this is happening on a platform where the number of active streamers participating has grown from 5 million to 12 million in one single month. Taking a step back, looking at this from a macro perspective, what do we see? Well, we see an entire industry of social media influencers circumventing age restrictions on gambling advertising by using a live streaming website seemingly built solely for that purpose, owned by the same founders as a crypto casino, where the crypto casino lines up deals with those streamers that are paid exclusively to move to the live streaming website so that they can have inflated balances and showcase the most addictive aspect of online gambling possible, winning big. That's example number two. Example number three is likely to be the most commonly understood so far, but it's also the most obvious. Video games. See, video games have become the highest grossing entertainment industry on earth, but the reason for that is gambling. Broken down by segment, the largest revenue stream in video games bar none is mobile gaming, and mobile gaming as well as AAA level franchises in PC and console gaming such as FIFA or 2K or CSGO especially among others, is driven by loot boxes. Most people probably already understand what those are, but for those that don't, it's gambling, quite obviously. It's pay to play dopamine hit flashy gambling where you open a box and get unknown things that in many parts of the world is entirely unregulated. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, CSGO gun cases analyzed by Jeremy Ray in 2019, for those, the RTP return to player was significantly below that of the legal minimum in Las Vegas, and there is a return to player because CSGO crates are tied to Steam, which has tradable items and a shadow economy of cash in, cash out functionality. That's just one example from video games, but the concept of randomized loot box gambling has pervasively invaded gaming to a degree where practically every single dedicated player will recognize what it is, why it's bad, and fundamentally hate the concept. They still engage with it, on occasion, but they see it for what it is. Loot box gambling, however, is not just present at a AAA level in PC and console gaming, it's overwhelmingly present in mobile gaming, which is the largest revenue stream in the gaming market to begin with, further demonstrating that the concept of gambling has invaded multiple industries now in a way where it circumvents advertising law, age law, and common decency, with ever-increasing profit margins. Here's the kicker. Research out of Western Sydney, as just one example, showcases that gambling losses and problem gambling behavior are concentrated in lower income areas. The saturation of slot machines and targeted risk-free initial betting incentives, also sometimes called inducements, has exacerbated a problem where gambling is used to try and solve monetary issues for a lot of desperate people. 
thereby rapidly increasing the damage it does and leading to addiction more effectively. Likewise, by circumventing advertising laws and having crypto casinos construct an entire social media apparatus to target livestream viewers with high-value slot machine gaming, the damage is being compounded faster than any traditional casino could ever achieve in its entire lifespan. 5,000 years ago, humans gambled with knuckle bones and rocks. Today, they gamble with high-tech smartphones in all of our pockets, and the speed at which casinos are able to find new methods of attracting customers has outpaced every single form of social taboo, governmental regulation, or societal restraint. From one in five American adults now placing bets on sports games after just a couple of years of the concept being widely legalized, to an entire generation being bombarded with prepaid gambling propaganda, really is what it is, for their sole entertainment format on live streaming platforms, as one example, the unending growth of gambling is an undeniable and seemingly unstoppable phenomenon. That's it. I don't know what to do about the whole thing, but it was something I really wanted to talk about after a viewer mentioned a little bit about FanDuel and DraftKings and joint ownership and, and that kind of stuff. So it led to this video. Thank you for that comment, by the way. If you want to support the channel, there are links down below to Patreon, Locals, and channel memberships. Also, if you want a VPN, a virtual private network, everyone should use a VPN. My affiliate link is down there as well to Surfshark, big supporter of the channel. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, question everything and have a nice night.